Hello, everybody, and welcome to the newest episode of Pop Talks. We're keeping with that semi-consistent schedule, meaning it hasn't been six months since the last one. The schedule's giving me a semi. Are we going to start this over? <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll do it live. <laughs> yeah. Fuck it. We'll do it live. We'll do it live. Yeah. So I'm Andy. I'm here with Jason. Hi, I'm Jason. Yeah. You already know who we are, but we're here with... John Sturkey, he's our, back yes. to the show. Uh, yeah, yeah. Back here for the second and possibly the last time? Oh my god. Possibly not. We'll see. Have you listened to this podcast? <laughs> There's no way this is going to be the last you, time. You know, I, I listened to the episode I was on. <laughs> and I have to say, I'm not a fan of the podcast. <laughs> but you have good tasting guests, so. Yeah. We do have the best guests. We do. And we also have good tasting topics. Well, it's debatable. But... But we won't be... Do that's that's yeah. actually the subject of uh, yeah. this episode. <laughs> Does it's... our podcast suck or not? <laughs> We're going to debate that. Yeah. Does our podcast suck or not? Let us know in the comments. If you think the podcast sucks, send $1 to... <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Send $10. If you like it, just send one. <laughs> there will be a collection box at JPM Comics and Games <laughs> on free comic book day. <laughs> <laughs> but no, today we're talking about Vertigo Comics. Because we felt that this would be a pretty good follow-up episode to our last one with John, where we talked about Image Comics. Yes. Um, both companies slash imprints that, um, or lines, shall we say, a brand that revolutionized the comic book industry and kind of pushed it further than it had ever been pushed before. So. Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, Vertigo is like the cool '90s image. Yeah. But, but they're really well, good. Well, though, eight, '80s image, thing. I guess. It was a little bit before. But still, yeah. What's great about the Vertigo is that it's aged well. Yeah, yeah. A lot of that stuff, I think, has graduated to the realm of, like, modern classic. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah, definitely. The, the way I compare it um, is it's sort of um, some of my favorite movies. But, like, Vertigo, if it was a film, it would be like, Vertigo is like Taxi Driver. Image Comics is like Drive. Yeah, you know what I mean? There's a movie called Vertigo. True. <laughs> Vertigo is so good that DC has taken a lot of their best stuff and turned it into the bland version of oh, in that the, stuff. In like, their yeah. universe, you mean? Yeah. yeah. Uh, like, oh, like, yeah. Like, 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 like Swamp Thing now is just a DC thing, mm -hmm. and it's like a really, really cool, like, less exciting version <laughs> of the Vertigo Swamp Thing. Yeah. You know? Like, and, and it's still selling well. Right, yeah. Because yeah. I buy eight copies to make sure they keep... <laughs> Printing it. Yeah, I mean, if they put Swamp Thing in a DC book, I'll buy it. Like, yeah. I don't really care what's in it. Like, I'm just going to get it, because Swamp Thing was amazing. So, it's one of How the come cool. they never, like, made, like, a gardening book featuring the, Swamp Thing? The Swamp Thing gardening book? Yeah. Swamp Thing's Guide to Gardening? Because DC hasn't been shy about merchandising. Yeah. Vertigo wasn't <laughs> shy about merchandising. <laughs> I, you got me? Well, probably because a lot of these, uh, I'd be surprised if very many of these comics writers know very much about gardening. I bet you a hundred thousand dollars that Alan Moore could tell you more about gardening than he smokes a lot of grass. I don't know if he knows how to grow his own. Uh, he well, he's a, he's a wizard. Yeah. To be fair, so if anything, it's just going to be him magicking, you know, some orchids into existence or whatever. That's oh yeah, that's true. He doesn't need to grow them; he just summons them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. He prays to Glycon that uh, a flower appears and or a tomato or whatever he has need for, and it's just there. It appears. All right. Or maybe he uses, like, you know, Amazon shopping as his grocery thing, you know? <laughs> it's like magic. He probably can't figure that out. <laughs> and he tries to, like, conjure up a millennial to teach him how to use. <laughs> yeah, right. well, he, well, it's because Amazon uses his characters. <laughs> oh, yeah, so he can't endorse that because yeah. they sell his characters. The letter A. Uh, it starts with the letter A, and so does his name. There's clear overlap. <laughs> um... Yeah, so yeah, mm. obviously, yeah, Swamp Thing is one of the Vertigo books that is uh, one of those Vertigo classics. Well, that was like um, one of the first ones that they did, too, mm -hmm. because that actually started, I have all the DC issues leading up to Saga of the Swamp Thing, nice. when it was called, well, it was still called the Saga of the Swamp Thing, right. but I remember the whole story was like, there's like a deaf and mute kid that Swamp Thing has to like protect or something, but it's like really like... 80s superhero horror mm. kind of stuff yeah, yeah. and it's funny because like you i've read all those issues because i read them when i was a kid mm. um and i love them um in fact my first issue of swamp thing i ever bought was saga of the swamp thing number six on the day that i met stan lee 
in like fourth grade. Hmm. So that issue. <laughs> Stanley, will you sign my swamp thing? <laughs> I'm very new to comics. <laughs> Anything true believer. <laughs> yeah, he probably would too. Yeah, yeah. He, he doesn't give a oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. No, especially yeah, yeah. then. I, I've heard I've heard more than one story of people like giving him a DC comic to sign and they're like, Oh, this is gonna get him, right? Because I'm sure they were the only people that ever thought to do that. <laughs> that's like that's like asking him who his favorite superhero is, which I did <laughs> when I met him when I was in fourth grade. But um yeah, no, those those issues are very like I think they're pretty well written, uh, you know, for the time. Saga of the Swamp Thing or the ones that, the ones leading up to the, it? the preceding oh, DC sure. ones. Mm -hmm. I think they're pretty good. But then it's funny because you get to when Alan Moore take o takes over, and you're just like, "What the fuck happened?" Yeah, like it's it's night and day. Oh yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, it, it's it's insane. Just like how like a light, it turns into <laughs> just something completely different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, that was one of the first ones they did, and then um, well, we should probably backtrack and read the Wikipedia article on this. <laughs> <laughs> or we could have done it before we were actually recording a podcast. That requires effort, though. Yeah. Which I... have you listened to this podcast before? <laughs> yeah, I, I know just bits and pieces of Karen Berger, like trying to find talent and coming across these well, a bunch of these British writers. Yeah, she she recruited a bunch of them. It says right here. <laughs> but it's called The British Invasion. Yeah. And it was where they started recruiting um, British writers from um, Britain. Yes, as, as one might. <laughs> yeah. going to... yeah. So it's not so much an invasion, though, is it? We invited them. It's more the British invitation. Yeah. Well, it's an invasion until... It, uh, it's, a, it's an invitation <laughs> until they get here, and then we're like, that's an invasion. Then it's an invasion, well, yes. Or, or... If there's three or more of them in the same place, then yeah. it's an invasion. Yeah, classic America. Mm -hmm. But, um, no, she brought over uh, Neil Gaiman, Jamie Delano, Peter Milligan, and Grant Morrison. It's showing. Um, that's the four. Yeah. And the Fab Four? Yeah. Fabulous. It's a nickname for the Beatles. I, I know. <laughs> the Beatles were a band in the 60s. Oh, is that they right? They were 1960s. Oh, they were British. Is that right? They invented oh, dabbing. Oh, okay. <laughs> they also invented bowl cuts. But but not not the dance move dabbing, but like with your weed. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that was their invention. They were more popular than Jesus, from what I've heard. Yeah. Well, you know, Jesus, Jesus didn't dab. <laughs> if he would have he and probably his, and his poll numbers were in the in decline in the 60s anyways so yeah that's pretty true yeah but yeah so she brought all these guys in um was you would know is miracle man before vertigo comes into because it says it was formed in 1993 93 so, oh yeah. it was in the 90s okay yeah um, so miracle man was well before that right been, yeah close to a decade before that okay so alan moore had already like started establishing himself as like a yeah. Proper yeah, to, writer. To some extent, yeah. Yeah, well, he had done um, Whatever Happened to the Man of Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. He had done, um, what was the one? He did, like, a Mogo short story. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah he had done Yeah. He had done a few, like, um, I don't know if he had even done whole issues of them, but he had done some contributions for, like, Vigilante, uh, a couple of Green Lantern stories. Yeah. Um, we well, did that. He, he basically ended the Kurt Swan Silver Age Superman. Yeah, with, yeah. Uh, whatever Happened to the Man of Tomorrow. Right. Um, before John Byrne came on, and mm -hmm. dare I say, made it better. <laughs> his his yeah, Man I'm of sure. Steel miniseries was pretty fucking yeah, good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so they sort of started bringing in all these um, British writers because they found that they had like a more mature kind of sensibility and everything. Right. And I think she basically just said, "Do whatever you want." Yeah, I mean, it, it at least appears that it was uh, something like, uh, here's a bunch of characters that we're not necessarily using right now, but we have. If you have ideas for them, let us know. And, yeah. Well, Watchmen was written well before this, too. I believe so, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that, well, it's not the 90s, so. No, yeah, it was like, it was mid-80s. I think it was 86, is what I remember. Yeah, 85 Something like that. So. Yeah. But um, basically, that's what they did with Watchmen. But they're like, well, we'll just create a whole comic book line well, yeah. of taking... Well, they they were about to... The, the original plan was for him to use the Charlton characters that DC yeah. had acquired over the years. So it would have been it would have been the question and Blue Beetle and characters like that. Captain but, Adam. And, yeah, 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 right, exactly. When when they saw what he had planned to do, they were like, um, no, you can't use <laughs> our characters, but feel free to make up your own. Yeah. So he just made, you know, he just made up knockoffs of the Charlton characters and did his own thing but that's what he did with miracle man though was it's like here's this character nobody yeah. gives a shit about right just do whatever you want with it yeah oh totally and basically karen Berger was like well why don't we just do that <laughs> for all these characters that nobody gives a shit about yeah because what's great is it's kind of um it's pre-established so they kind of 
they can hit the ground running, mm -hmm. but you're also telling them, just write whatever you want. Right, so, like, yeah. the Sandman, mm -hmm. uh, they even reference Wesley Dodds in, like, the yeah. first issue, I believe? Yeah. In the, so... One of the ones you've read. Yes, that's <laughs> true. I haven't made my way through the entirety of the Sandman, mm -hmm. but... I do plan to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They make reference to both for both of the previous Sandmans in the uh, the Neil Gaiman run. Yeah, so, yeah. It's well, and and that's a thing um, we were talking about before we started about uh, the early Vertigo is really like the fringe of the DC universe. Like all of the like the most of those characters, well, at least early in their runs, they'll interact with other DC characters. So like, um, you know, Sandman runs into Constantine. Yeah. Well, but he runs into Batman at some point, or uh, I'm not sure. His... Gaiman run. He runs into somebody from the Justice League. Not Martian like, Manhunter. Or I'm th yeah, I think it might have been a Martian Manhunter. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Because, yeah. Because yeah. like, that, well, that was the 80s also, wasn't it? Yeah, when it started, started. Yeah, yeah so it would have been right the Justice here. League International. So yeah, Martian Manhunter would have been... Yeah, that's what I was thinking It about. started in 89. Yeah. Which is kind of interesting, just seeing that it started in 89, because that came. that's the same year as the uh, Tim Burton Batman. Oh, yeah. Which kind of, um, in a similar fashion... Um, made Batman more mature finally. Yeah. yeah. Um I mean, Well the neon lights aged him for yeah. hundred years. <laughs> yeah. It's bad for the skin. Wait, are you thinking of the Joel Schumacher Batman movies? Because those had a lot of neon lights. Everything Tim Burton's <laughs> ever done has neon lights. <laughs> I guess that's true. He does stand on that <laughs> Axis chemical roof for quite a while <laughs> yeah. in that first movie. But no, I just uh, it, it was like across the board, um both in media adaptations of comics mm. and comics in general they were getting more and more mature. Right. So I yeah. just, like, I just like to put myself in the shoes of, like, somebody who is maybe, like, 16, 17 in 1989, mm -hmm. who maybe had been into comics and kind of fallen off. Can yeah. you imagine going to see Batman and then picking up the Sandman and going, like, oh, shit, this is what it is now? Yeah. You know what I right. mean? Yeah. Like, it was an entire... <laughs> The entire industry was shifting. Right. Well, unfortunately, no. I wouldn't say the entire industry was shifting. This tiny facet well, of the industry well, was shifting. It, uh, maybe not shifting, but it was being pushed. Well, yeah, and it was and it was uh, allowed to be there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was allowed to be popular and it was allowed to be mainstream. Yeah. Well, that, that was the thing. This this was you know into the buildup of the '90s and the big comics boom and all that right. stuff. And so with all that money going into comics, mm. some of the fringe stuff got pulled along with it. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, like we the the small stories that needed to be told that weren't just you know muscles and pouches right. got to ride the same wave yeah. that, that that all those big muscly guys were making yeah yeah so yeah in their wake yeah in, in the wake in of wake, ponytails got, and katana swords we we got uh uh more thin guys you yeah. know <laughs> thin <laughs> pale guys with long greasy black smell hair. like yeah. smelling of clove cigarettes yes. you know <laughs> wearing trench coats and being exactly mysterious. yeah <laughs> Uh, yeah, and, uh, thank God we did. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. But it's just, it was pushing comic book storytelling. And, uh, of course, right before that, you had The Dark Knight Returns, you had The Killing Joke. Right. You right. had Watchmen, Watchmen obviously, right, which is yeah. the one. It didn't Was Watchmen, like, the giant splash? It was, did that happen when it came out, where people like, this has changed the industry? Or is it, it kind of grew a legacy? I'm not sure if it was immediate, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't too long after the series had completed that mm -hmm. it, its impact was kind of showing um, beyond uh, a lot of previous comics. Because the, the way I've heard it described, it's like Watchmen is kind of why we have trade paperbacks and like why just about every comic series gets reprinted mm -hmm. is because Watchmen, obviously the single issues sold out and people wanted a reprint of it. And they, had, they had, not that they hadn't done collections before, but it wasn't as common as it is today. Yeah. But because Watchmen sold out, they had to reprint it. And then they had to reprint it, and then they had to reprint it. They kind of, I think it kind of, uh, you know, the, the publishers noticed, and they're like, "Oh, what if we did this with like more stuff? Could we sell reprints of stuff later on?" And that's why we have the trade paperback aspect of the industry now. Yeah. Now, now that we have the, you know, issue five came out last month. Where's my trade? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> what do you mean three months from now? God. <laughs> well, and I, I, I think that. Uh, even if it wasn't as big of a splash, like in terms of like critical recognition, uh, it was instantaneously uh, an influence to other comic book authors. Yes, the the second it came out, definitely. because it, it it was a big game changer. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, yeah, stylistically, um, content wise, like what content you're allowed to put in into mm -hmm. comics and stuff like that, what sort of subjects you're allowed to deal with, and how. Well, and, you know, and, and, and the, the whole premise is, uh, uh, there's the undertone of, like, hey, why are you idiots writing about superheroes? Like, like, yeah. like why do we want superheroes? Yeah. And I think that uh, part of what we get in Vertigo is 
why do we want superheroes? Right. What are the other stories we can tell? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, that's, it, you know, the the connection there, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, and, and yeah, I mean, not to say that there's no place for superheroes, but it's like there's so much else. And, and, that's, and that's really like Vertigo, yeah, those Swamp Thing, Sandman, V for Vendetta, stuff like that, were like, those were my first things that I read that kind of showed me like, oh, like... There's a whole other like slew of stories and genres and yeah. stuff that you're not even touching if you're just reading superhero comics that are like, yeah, this is the mainstream paint by numbers kind of thing. Whereas over here they're doing just different stuff, and that can be more interesting. It's yeah, just weirder shit. You right. Know? <laughs> this is like discovering like Alejandro Jodorowsky movies for the first time. <laughs> have you ever seen El Topo or any? Have you ever heard of that? It's just a complete acid western, but okay. it, but it's just it's the weirdest, most experimental shit you've ever seen. Nice. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like that. I, that's kind of how I felt when I started reading Vertigo mm-hmm. back in high school. Was I'm like, oh, this isn't even, this isn't even like a really well told superhero comic. This just isn't a superhero yeah, comic. Yeah, it's it's just, just a com- even if it has a superhero character in it, like right. Like, the Sandman, you could make the argument is like a superhero sure. in terms of like he has powers. Mm-hmm. Occasionally fights evil. I'm yeah. assuming. Yeah, yeah, to some extent. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's it's some but, next level shit. That's yeah. what it is. It's just it takes it to a, a different level, and it's um. And I don't think it's a criticism of the industry. I think it's sure, just. No, a, yeah. it, I think what it is 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 a, it's a compliment to creators. Yeah, absolutely. Where it's like once you unhook the chain and you're just like, oh, we're not making billions of dollars off this character, so you don't have a thousand rules shackling right. you down. You could do whatever you want, and you know that's why we get these fantastic runs. Well, yeah, I mean, they, they, uh, with Sandman, there had been two Sand, Sandman characters before. The mm-hmm. one that Neil Gaiman wrote was a brand new Sandman. Like, there wasn't another Sandman like that before that yeah. he, like, picked up and kind of fiddled with and made his own. Like, he just made a brand new Sandman that was completely different from any of the previous Sandman characters they'd had before. And, and yeah, that's because they, they let him off the chain. Like, cool, yeah, you could, we like your idea for this. Go, go ahead and run with it and, and do something cool. And, nailed it <laughs> yeah or, or like it, on another um side of the spectrum you get something like grant morrison's animal man mm. which i haven't read the whole thing of but i have been reading it yeah. and it starts off as just really well written but pretty standard superhero stuff yeah and very quickly becomes just the weirdest shit you've ever read in your life yeah you know yeah well, when you read enough of that uh earlier vertigo stuff and you kind of start to wonder if that was almost like what they were told to do like keep it grounded for the first like few issues or the first arc but then you can do like really take yeah really take off because yeah the first volume of sandman first volume of swamp thing first volume of animal man it's yeah it's it's very well done um but it's still it's still fairly grounded in like the dc universe or what you would expect from a comic book yeah but all of those eventually you're like holy shit like this is not where i expected this to end up like at there will be probably several points along the you know along the road that you're just like holy shit this is way different from where I you know where I thought it was going at the beginning. Yeah. Well, I, I mean Hellblazer uh, is yeah. all over the map. Right. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> that that was uh, the longest running of the initial Vertigo yeah. uh, imprints. Uh, ran from their uh, initial founding mm-hmm. until 2013. Yeah. 300 yeah. issues. Yeah, 300 issues. Uh, that's it's like their spawn. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously though, yeah. I mean, and and Fables had a real solid run, and that didn't reach three hundred issues. So yeah, jeez, uh, how many Fable just has so many issues. Yeah, I don't uh, know if Fables quite made it to two hundred. I think it, I think it passed the halfway mark to it, but I don't think it quite made it to two hundred. And Fables got a video it. game, but Constantine yeah. got a movie. So right. and a TV so, show. So half a TV show. We, yeah, <laughs> we'll get to that. Yeah, a network television. Yeah. yeah, fairly counts as television. Yeesh. Yeah, it was not the right. Yeah, it was the right frame for them. Yeah, but um, so this kind of came out, and it was just it was across the board. People were like, "Holy shit! I cannot believe what is happening here." Yeah. So if we want to kind of go through some of the like the main titles of mm-hmm. like what they're well, because I kind of view. I mean, I mean, people will be like, "Oh, you're fucking stupid" or whatever. But like, I kind of view Watchmen as like proto Vertigo. It is, yeah. Which is which is basically like I know we said he used very thinly veiled um, archetypes for Blue Beetle and um, yeah, you know like, uh, the question, question and, and just all that. Captain Adam. But at the same time, it's the same principle of like I'm just going to twist this character however I want, right? Just because yeah. he created it as a new one. This is like yeah. if Alan Moore was able to do the question. 
this is what he would have made it. Right, you know what yes, I mean? Yeah. And and he did that with You Got Me Hooked on Miracle Man. Yeah, I'm, right, right. I'm reading the second book right now. Mm-hmm. It's pretty fucking good. It is fucking good. It gets really it's, weird. It's Yeah, it's, it's it, one of the best superhero comics ever made. Yeah, it gets really weird, and mm-hmm. it's getting weirder. Miracle Dog. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's pretty fucking cool. <laughs> that's in both. Yeah, but, th- but that's what he did with Miracle Man, too, where right. he's just like, Nobody's using this. Right, yeah. Why can't I turn it well, into and, something cool? And he cool? read them as a kid, and yeah. he was like, oh, like, at some point in his youth, it had occurred to him, like, oh, what if Miracle Man was aging out there? So he just had this image of, like, an uh, an older Miracle Man, like, walking down the road, like, kind of, like, shuffling down, and <laughs> that was sort of, like, the impetus of his idea to do uh, the Miracle Man, or Marvel Man character that he did in the 80s. Yeah, so I, I view that stuff as, like, kind of proto-Vertigo, yeah, and yeah. then in 93, it's just kind of... They made it official. Right, exactly, yeah. You know, they put a ring on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they locked it down. They put a mature content advisory on it. Right. That's, <laughs> that's actually, we can't really understate how big of a deal that is, though. Yeah. That, oh, especially yeah. Because the comics code was still a thing back right. then. <laughs> like, like, I was watching a documentary. This is not nearly as good as Vertigo comics, but I was watching mm. a, a documentary of with Howard Mackey mm. talking about when he rebooted Ghost Rider in the 90s with Danny Ketch, okay. which is actually a pretty solid run for the beginning yeah <laughs> until okay. it go, until it goes like full 90s okay but yeah, it's a yeah. pretty solid ghost rider run for a while um but he was talking about how he's like he's like it's kind of hard for us to um do like a full-on horror book because there was still the comics code right you still couldn't get away with a lot of stuff yeah, yeah. so he's like a lot of the shit i wanted to show was not permissible by the comics yeah, code. so right. the fact that they that they have like in Sandman, the first volume, they have like this disgusting naked lady with like, you oh, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, that's just like falling apart and everything. Who's clearly like a drug addict. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that's not allowed. Long term. <laughs> you know, that's, um, it's amazing that it was allowed because, mm-hmm. like, for example, like Marvel in the 70s, they did Howard the Duck and The Punisher and Deathlock and Man Thing and all these kind of Werewolf by Night. I, that was a comic, but they also would do magazine size oh, yeah. for Blade, especially. They would do yeah. magazine size. Um, format yeah for these characters because if it was magazine size then it wouldn't be under the scrutiny of the comics code right so they yeah. were allowed to do whatever they wanted mm-hmm. um so the fact that it's like mature readers yeah that's yeah fucking huge exactly. it's like, you this know? Is, no no this is a comic book but yeah it's, it's mature readers only <laughs> yeah uh, uh, imagine if like up until the mid 90s Mo- like R-rated movies weren't allowed. Right. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, and exactly. then finally R-rated movies were allowed yeah. to be shown and mm-hmm. made. You know what I mean? That yeah. That's how big this was for right. the medium. Yeah. Or if you were going to watch a rated R movie, it was going to be a very uh, like gross, uh, shady theater, like the back room yeah. of some place. Yeah, yeah. It's just you and like nine other dudes. It's just you and Paul Rubens back there. <laughs> yeah. And... Just plastic on the floor. and Yeah. And that kind of thing. But then, yeah, then, then it's open and everybody can be like, yeah, no, I mean, if you're a proper, yeah, if you're of age, you can, you can enjoy this content. Yeah. It's your God-given right. Well, I mean, you don't sell Vertigo comics to kids. No. Yeah. Yeah, anything, anything that has much of your thing on it, we won't sell it to a kid. If the kid is accompanied by an adult, I'll tell them, like, oh, hey, this Deadpool comic you're buying for your seven-year-old, it's got a parental advisory on it, so parent, be advised. That's pretty much it. If they still want to buy it, then that's on them. Well, I've done all I can do. That's that's exactly it. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell anybody how to parent, but I'm gonna tell them what they should know. Yeah, I mean, I think the greater offense there is isn't that it's mature; it's that it's Deadpool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Is that they're buying them a Deadpool <laughs> comic? No, like 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 there are much better mature comics to <laughs> yeah, exactly. give to your eight year old. Yeah, like, if you're gonna if you're gonna fill your kid's head with a bunch of mature concepts, this I mean, one really you can have nipples in it. Come exactly. On. <laughs> Zero penetration in this book. Are you sure you want? Well, to there's a lot of penetration. Yeah, <laughs> but it's with like swords. Swords, and yeah. Size and other sharp objects. <laughs> I mean, they fucking let their kids play Call of Duty, so I don't know right. why it really matters if yeah. they can read a Deadpool comic. <laughs> uh, the sense of humor. Right. Oh yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> that that A grade humor that <laughs> Deadpool comics. Have. Well, that's that's what I'm saying. Is like you know, you know like. If your kid's gonna be a shit, at least make him a funny one. You know, don't yeah. give him Deadpool. <laughs> give him Ambush Bug. <laughs> at least then he'll have some sarcasm. No, but if you guys want to go through some of the titles that they yes, had, yeah, just Proceed. to show how legendary they were. Mm-hmm. So, 
Um, they started off with mostly superhero science fiction. And so there was Animal Man, Doom Patrol, Shade the Changing Man. Um, then there, after that, there was Sandman, Hellblazer, and Saga of the Swamp Thing. Mm. So that was like their initial lineup. Yeah. And obviously Saga of the Swamp Thing and Sandman are the two standouts of Definitely that. Definitely stand out quite a bit, yeah. I mean, Doom yeah. Patrol is also pretty huge. Um, Animal Man? Yeah, Animal <laughs> yeah. Man is, is it yeah. nothing? <laughs> well, and Doom Patrol, I'm not sure uh, what happened in between like them being new and that one. Like, I'm not sure how often DC was like trying to start up Doom Patrol series or, or not, so I don't know if it was just like, alright, Golden Age and... Yeah, let's put them back on, you know, back in the toy box, and you know, if we need them, we'll pull them out. Yeah, but yeah, that was definitely one of the one that probably had a longer gap of not being printed at all. Um, but yeah, Sandman, Swamp Thing are just like they're they're phenomenal. They're, they're I, I I try not to oversell them because I like them so much. Like mm-hmm. I can get overexcited about them, but like I feel that if you finish those series, it might change your life. Like those are big yeah, books. Like, just. It's not hard to oversell, or it's not possible to oversell Taxi Driver right, yeah, and exactly. Citizen Kane. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you're going to love them no matter what. Yeah. Like, they've, they're they're worthy of the reputation that they have. Yeah, well, and, and yeah, stylistically, they were also very different. Well, actually, they were they were very different, but they were kind of the same. Like, I was, I was paging through some Silver Age books this week, and they have a lot more words than they do now. <laughs> I find, and it's and yeah. they were trying to be kind of maybe not poetic, but they were trying to be dramatic and dynamic in you know in their uh, their word choices and what they their, what they chose to print on the page with uh, with dialogue and narrative and stuff like that. And that's what I find is also pretty distinct right away with Sandman, with Miracle Man, even with mm-hmm. um, you know Watchmen, Swamp Thing, stuff like that. It's like they're it's 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 deliberate and it's, you know, they choose it all very carefully. And a lot of it is, you know, a lot of Alan Moore and Sandman stuff is Sandman is somewhat fantastic, you know, fantastical kind of uh, character and, and world. So the poetry sort of thing works for that. Um, but yeah, you wouldn't necessarily expect that with Swamp Thing, but it's also like just kind of elevated in its sophistication yeah. to some extent. Well, it's the Swamp Thing before that was just kind of had the, the personality traits of like, Ben Grimm, sure, yeah. where he's just like, oh, if I just made a serum, I would turn back to my old self, and yeah. that's kind of tale the... as old as time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's just the narrative thrust of all those old ones, right? Uh, which, which is fine. Yeah, those Len Wein, those Len Wein, Bernie Wrightson ones yes. are true masterpieces Absolutely. of the comic book genre. Yeah. They are fucking fantastic. Mm-hmm. But it's just Alan Moore came in, and he, I, I've watched an interview with him where he said, like, well, I started to think about what does it actually feel like to be a disgusting swamp creature. <laughs> Nobody really did that before. You know, right, it was yeah. just like, well, this sucks. I'm yeah. going to go fight a vampire. Right, you exactly. Know? And then, but this, it's like, there's multiple issues of just swamp things sitting there like, well, this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. But they, they kind of, for lack of a, you know, no pun intended, but he brings you down into the muck <laughs> of this character. Yeah. You know, and you kind of learn more about him. Right, yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, and you, you get to, well, and that's that's another thing too, is they like sort of explore, you know, the psyche of these characters that are mm-hmm. not like us, which is kind of, you know, definitely one of some of the appeal of comics and, and even superheroes and stuff like that. Yeah. Like Superman is not like us. So it's interesting to get in his head for a little while. And yeah, same can be said for the Lord of Dream or, uh, you know, a protector of Earth who's kind of made of the Earth. Same can be said for John Malkovich. Sure, yeah. <laughs> that he's not like us. No, well, you, you want to get into his head for a little while. Right, yeah. About 15 minutes, and then you drop onto the interstate. Um, yeah. yeah, it works for that as well. Yeah. But you, you've read a lot of this stuff too, right, John? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, you, you Sandman is re- required reading. Like, yeah. <laughs> that, that's the thing, is like, if you're getting into comics, like, if... Uh, it, it's it's a it's a monolith. It's mm-hmm. this, uh, and you know, at this point, it's done. So it's it's uh, also just like very achievable to read this touchstone for uh, fantasy comics, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, so yeah, it's 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 uh, at least for me, it was one of the earliest recommendations I got from friends, like even people who didn't necessarily read comics. Right. Um. Maybe they read a lot more uh, manga. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, but e- even then, Sandman is just something that you have to read. Yeah. Uh, 
and you know, it, it's telling that Neil Gaiman is uh, more of an author than he is a comic book writer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he writes novels, and so Sandman sort of captures a lot of that. Mm. Uh, there, there's pages of text intermittently throughout the series, right? Uh, but it still works. Yeah, it still works. And uh, yeah, Swamp Thing. Uh, one of the first comics I ever read. Uh, I think the first comic I ever read, my grandmother had a big stack of comics and she just kind of surprised me. Like, yeah, I used to read comics, you know? And so I have these old ratty swamp things nice. from the eighties. Cool. Uh, not consecutive necessarily. Okay. <laughs> is it the Alan Moore run or is it? I don't even remember. Uh, these huh. things are in bad shape, <laughs> okay. but it, it's what made me fall in love with the character. So yeah. once like I started reading comics and, you know, I started caring about reading all of them in order, <laughs> yeah. uh, like, like I pick up the Alan Moore trade of Swamp Thing yeah. and it's just an amazing story. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's another touchstone for what comics can do. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, that, and that's, yeah, that's what I think, uh, Vertigo has achieved is really, yeah, just kind of showing, like, this medium can do more than just, you know, brightly colored costumes and explosions and stuff. Like, it can can uh, influence your thoughts. Uh, it can open your mind. Like, that kind of thing. Oh, uh, I was going to say about Sandman. Uh, it is a real, it's, it's a big enough deal that it won a Hugo Award. And... Mm -hmm. Which is uh, typically for sci-fi and fantasy novels, right? Yes, uh, it's almost exclusively right. Well, it it would have it, it now is yeah, exclusively. Nah. They changed the rules after it won that award. Like they're like, oh yeah, we need to we need to change these rules so that this can't happen again. They really changed the yeah. rule. Oh, yeah, they adjusted shit. the rules to make sure that yeah, comics couldn't be a part of the Hugo Awards. It's like, well, kind of already won it, so fuck you. At least they gave it to a really good one. Right. Oh yeah. 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 Definitely deserving of whatever awards it can get. <laughs> But no, these are fantastic. One of my favorite, this is just a minor detail, but one of my favorite moments of any Vertigo comic is when um, Swamp Thing goes down to hell to re rescue Abby Arcane. Mm -hmm. And he goes, he, he meets the demon. He meets all these characters. It's such an awesome issue. <laughs> yeah. He just meets all these like really fucked up demonic DC characters. Mm -hmm. um, he gets Abby. And as he's leaving, he sees like Anton Arcane. And he's part of, like, this gelatinous ball of, like, yeah. misery of just, like, all these, like, naked pulsating bodies just screaming on it. Like, and, it like, looks, mashed together. It, it, it looks like you look into, like, the oven in a concentration camp is what he, this looks like. he uttered the infamous line, check, please. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I might need to reread this. <laughs> no, I mean, that, that's yeah. the thing. It's just the word bubble. Check, please. Uh. But, um, no, there's a part there where he's, like, is like obviously suffering mm. and he he had died a little bit ago in the in the series right and he goes like swap thing before you leave he's like how many centuries have i been here he's like you've been down here a week and you see the look on his face he's like a week and he's like no 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 yeah yeah no 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 no, 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 no. <laughs> and and i gotta be honest that's not right that's not right <laughs> like that is one of the creepiest things I have ever read, and also one of the most profound things about religion I have ever <laughs> right, read, yeah. in terms of, like, because when you're a kid, and your parents explain the concept of, like, heaven to you, mm. and they're like, that's where you go, and it's, it's just great forever. Yeah. I was always scared of the forever part. Right. I was like, forever? Yeah. Like, just the concept of, like, infinity mm -hmm. is fucking terrifying. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, the ending of 2001 A Space Odyssey is fucking terrifying, yeah. the concept of infinity. Mm -hmm. So the idea that, like, Anton Arcane is suffering so badly that yeah. he's like, he's like, how many centuries have I been here? And it's like, oh, you've been here a week. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like right. infinity is forever, but at mm -hmm. the same time, you're like, I've only been here a week? <laughs> I have infinity of this shit? Yeah. You know, it's terrifying. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty profound. Right. It's like working at Arby's. <laughs> I was gonna say. Have you worked at Arby's? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> I bet I can just imagine. Yeah. Like, like you walk into an Arby's and time <laughs> seems to stop. Oh, my God. The horsey sauce is good, though. Like, yeah, I like the horsey sauce. Yeah, the horsey sauce is good. And their mint chocolate chip shakes. Ooh, I haven't had those. Well, good. make you feel like you're not in hell. Nice. <laughs> you know what's funny is that my parents and I and my brother, we will drive to um, Arby's in, I think it's in Lakewood. You know there's ones closer. <laughs> well, there's, no, there's one in Ontario. Those are the closest ones. Well, after the one in Covina closed. Yeah. yeah. I know there's one in Anaheim, and that's where I work, so... Ah, that makes sense. Well, I'm just saying, like, after the one in Covina closed, we will now drive to Lakewood <laughs> for fucking Arby's. Because that sauce is pretty damn good. Yeah.
I don't know what this has to do with. I, I don't know comics. if it's that good, but <laughs> you know what is better than Arby sauce is uh, Swamp Thing. Yeah, <laughs> is Hell Hellblazer right? Like yeah. Oh my God! Are is you a Hellbla- big Hellblazer fan? I, I've read all th- uh, three hundred issues of the issue run. Oh, shit. run. It's shit. just it is so good, um, because it's a character that's not really an anti-hero, mm. but he's definitely not a hero. Right. He's, he's a protagonist yeah, exactly. who is an asshole. <laughs> yeah. uh, he's doing what he he can to get by in a world that wants to end. Right. <laughs> like, well, like, not to mention anyone near him dies, or tends to die. Right. And he's, it's partially through his fault, partially just through fate, mm. you know, uh, and it's all just, like, beating him down, and... Uh, it's also a world of magic. Like, yeah. like, like it's this juxtaposition of, you know, when you think of magic, you think of wonder, you think of excitement. Yeah. And it's, it's not like, oh, dark satanic magic, you know, right. all that stuff. It's like, it is wonderful magic mm-hmm. that comes at a cost of all happiness, you know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, it, it, it makes for a really beautiful story. And, uh, you know, a lot of really beautiful story lines. Yeah. Uh, uh, especially the ones where he doesn't do magic at all. Right, yeah, yeah, seriously. Which is so crazy, because, like, it's hard to imagine, you know, an issue of, well, I mean, of some, like, take of some superheroes and them, like, just not using their powers for a whole issue or a whole story arc. Like, a whole story arc? Like, like the pizza dog issue of Hawkeye. Sure, right, yeah. yeah. But, like, like, when you just take a step back from it, Yeah. but without deconstructing it, don't sure. watch me, just take yeah. a step back from it and, mm-hmm. like, see what you really have. Right. Ooh. Shut yeah. kiss. <laughs> <laughs> You're selling me on Constantine even more than I was already sold I on Constantine. Yeah, I, just, I, I think I've read like the first twenty issues or so, um, and then like probably just sporadic like storylines here and there. I read the gun issue that Warren Ellis wrote yeah. with uh, Phil Jimenez that they pulled because Columbine happened what like the week before it was going to come out or something, and what? they were just like, "Stop the presses." <laughs> what is it about? Is it about school like shooting. it's about a school shooting? Yeah. Holy shit! Yeah. Yeah, it's not the first time that something like that has happened to Warren Ellis, where, like, he has this pretty, like, different idea, and then people look at it later, and they're like, hmm, weird that this this or something like this is happening in the real world. You write about, like, people doing shitty things over and over again. People are gonna do shitty things. you're gonna have to get more inventive, and so is the world. (laughs) Comics don't create psychos. Comics make psychos more creative. (laughs) Right. I don't think they even do that. They're probably not. Psychos don't have time to read comics. Right. I'm sane and I don't have time to read comics. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> they barely have enough time to, I don't know, sharpen their machetes or whatever the fuck they need. Yeah, to build pipe bombs. <laughs> um, but no, yeah, Hellblazer, yeah. definitely one of the staples. Yeah. Um, and that crosses over with Swamp Thing a lot. Well, yeah. that yeah. Well, Constantine uh, was created by uh, Alan Moore in the Swamp Thing run, actually. Yeah, the character comes from Swamp Thing. Yeah, yeah but I mean, like, they're best friends. Or they not are best friends. <laughs> acquaintances. intimate acquaintances. They are yeah. acquainted, yes. Yeah. Doesn't <laughs> Hellblazer impregnate Abby Arcane? Um, did he? Constantine? I, uh, what didn't he, wasn't he like the surrogate for Swamp Thing and Abby Arcane's? He's nutted in a lot of ladies. Yeah. That's true. He's and a lot, a lot of other of, things. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I don't, I don't know if he impregnated Abby Arcane, uh, Maybe I don't know. No. They have they have their own form of intercourse, but um, it wouldn't lead to impregnation. He uh, uh, impregnated a dragon once. Okay, yeah. See, I was gonna, I just said other things. I was like, I'm well, pretty sure he it, banged it, other it, stuff. It was in a human form. Oh, I see. Or it was lady that gave birth to a dragon. Okay. Swamp or uh, Hell, Hellblazer gets weird. Okay, yeah, I like yeah. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Did you know that uh, John Constantine was meant to be designed? His look was designed after Sting. I did not know that, but really? I believe it 100%. Dude, yeah. Like, yeah, look, like at, look at the first... I think it's in the first issue of uh, that he shows up in Swamp Thing. Like, there's one or, there's one panel in particular that I'm kind of uh, remembering. I'll see if I can pull that's it That's, like, a pretty good close-up of him. And knowing that it's meant to look like Sting in the 80s, you're like, oh, yeah, that's exactly him. Well, and that makes sense, too. He is in a punk rock band. Right, yeah. So. <laughs> well, what's great about Constantine is he's just one of those guys that just... He doesn't want a part of any of this yeah right is is this the panel you're thinking of it might be i'm not certain i mean i feel like there's another one that that looks more like him i mean he looks exactly like sting but yeah well that's most panels (laughs) (laughs) 
Um, about Constantine? No. I don't think so. I don't have as much to say about it, because like I said, I only read the first like couple of story arcs. But yeah, I, I, I read enough to get that, like, okay, still cut cigarettes, don't be anywhere near this guy, because it'll eventually lead to your death. And then you'll have to haunt him, because, I mean, of course, you have to be haunted. Um, well, I'm reading right here that there were a couple of titles that were supposed to be under the Vertigo imprint, such as, uh, it says Green Arrow, Black Hawk, and Question, because oh. those all carried the uh, Age Advisory. Okay. And they were all canceled before the transition came. Okay. So I'm like, we could have gotten a Vertigo Question. Yeah. We could, yeah I'm not as excited cool. about Vertigo, Green Arrow. Not as much, well, but, you're, you're not excited yeah. about it because you didn't get a chance to see it. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. like, we don't know. Right, yeah. I'm just saying, like, Green Arrow is so much a part of the DC universe yeah. that I'm like, it's fine if he stays there. Yeah. But, like, the question in Blackhawk, that would have been fucking cool yeah. to see as a, a Vertigo, t- full-on Vertigo mm-hmm. title. But they kind of, they kept going and it kept getting weirder and weirder. Because <laughs> I'm reading here they did, like, Death, the High Cost of Living. Yeah. And then they brought That's on Matt. They're the same right here, uh, Sandman Mystery Theater, yeah. which I bought um, the first volume of today. Mm. I'm reading constantly. <laughs> but um, they just, oh, that's what I was going to talk about. One of my favorite Vertigo titles, the stuff that nobody talks about, they did three Jonah Hex miniseries. Oh, okay. And they were like, they had weird monsters and like cults and evil cannibals mm. and supernatural those shit. Good cannibals that are just like good neighbors and they tidy up after themselves and stuff. Yeah, I mean, there's different levels to cannibals. <laughs> Some are more likable than others. I'm sure, yeah. Some just eat their friends. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they had, it, I think it was, it was called Two Gun Mojo and then there was Riders of the Worm and such and okay. then there was one other one that I don't remember. Mm. But that is one of my favorite Vertigo titles. Nice, Nobody yeah. ever talks about it. Mm. I have the complete series. Nice. It's the weirdest, creepiest, like, horror, sci-fi, supernatural, western you've ever read. And I'm, and I'm like, why wasn't this the Jonah Hex movie? Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, that movie was kind of weird, too, but it wasn't, you know, cannibals and monsters weird. But yeah, it was weird that it was 70 minutes long, and they felt that they could release it as a feature-length <laughs> as a film. Movie, yeah. Ooh. Those are something I wanted to bring up. Yeah. Uh, I love Jonah Hex vertigo titles they're great mm-hmm. but um do you guys have other series that you want to talk well, about or? uh i mean recently dc just relaunched the vertigo imprint mm-hmm. uh so so we've been getting some cool new ones uh hex wives mm-hmm. which i'm loving uh goddess mode mm-hmm. uh pretty cool uh Oh, uh, Border Town, which got Border sort of Town, on yeah, which but uh, that that one, uh, yeah. yeah, the the, the, the writer on that weird. one got some uh, accusations of uh, sexual abuse, and then no yeah. one wanted to work with him nice. or buy his books, and uh-huh. yeah, so that one didn't launch. So that one, that yeah. one, I guess we could call that a classic Vertigo launch in that it fails immediately. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty pretty immediately. Well, I mean. Before we get to the relaunch, they also had. I'm reading. Oh yeah. There was invi- yeah. There's there's definitely like phases to it. Yeah. Like, yeah. Because um, originally it was yeah sort of like the fringe of the DC universe. Later on, it became more like, more of an imitation of Image, like more of like a. It's like creator owned. It's not because it's owned by DC, but they had more. They had the yeah. same amount of creative freedom, or possibly I guess even more creative freedom, uh, to do what they wanted with other stuff, um, like uh, fables and. Um, well, there's Transmetropolitan. Oh, yes, there's, Transmetropolitan. They did Lucifer, which was a spinoff oh, yeah. of Sandman, right? right? Yeah. Yeah, and then there's um, or was that a spinoff of Hellblazer? No, it's Sandman. It was Sandman. Spinoff of Hell- Sandman. Okay, and then there was uh, DMZ. Why the Last oh, yeah. Man? Oh, what? Yeah, Hundred Bullets. Yes, Hundred Bullets. And then Bullets. Yes, The Invisibles. And then the one mm-hmm. I have to mention because it's probably my favorite Vertigo title of all. I haven't finished any of them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so a, I feel like yeah. I'm just kind of. <laughs> Kind of, kind of blowing your load here before you oh. actually uh, get yeah. to the end. So far, it's my favorite Vertigo title of all. Uh, Garth Ennis' Preacher. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Very, very good Very good series. Which is just... You're talking about the Sandman and everything being yeah. next level mm-hmm. and everything. This, to me, because I read it when I was... I started reading it when I was about 14. Um, I kind of dropped off because that's just what happens when you're 14. Right. You know? <laughs> um, but I started reading it and I was like, holy shit yeah because coming from like 
the background that I do, the amount of like religious shit that mm-hmm. they put in there, I'm like, this is Garth Ennis has some balls on him. Oh yeah, to write this. Obviously, you know what <laughs> yeah. I mean. Like, and and I'm not one of those people that's like, because to me, do whatever you want. Yeah, it's but, a fair game. Yeah, religion, politics, everything is fair game in, in fiction. I don't care. Mm-hmm. But there is certain stuff on there where I'm like. He was really incurring the wrath of a lot of people who yeah. do care sure, yeah. with this, because this is like pretty fucked up right. shit. Well, and that, and that probably that may have even been part of the motivation of like, hmm, how how much can I provoke them? Like, how much yeah. pro- provocation will they take from me before, yeah, they actually try to do something? And it's amazing that it's a great story. Too. Yeah, right. You know, I own it all. Mm-hmm. I'm making my way through it. Yeah. Um. Well, and and nah. that one I think is definitely like for for your tastes. What I know of your tastes, that's going to be way more up your alley than some of the other Vertigo titles that have come out. Like, Fables, you're probably not going to really dig on. It's really good, but it's not necessarily something that you're going to be as interested in as something like Preacher. Fables, not as subversive as Preacher. Sure, yeah. I'll go out on that list. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, definitely not. I mean, it, it had it has some edgy moments here and there. Yeah, uh, you, they, you these... it does not have those uh, pristine Preacher edgy moments. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nowhere near... No, I mean, no one does. Garth Ennis no, is the So king, many uh... less fluids in Fables. <laughs> yeah. Generally speaking, yeah, I guess. I never uh, stopped to think about this, but Garth Ennis is probably one of my favorite comic book writers ever. Mm-hmm. I mean, between his Punisher and, you know, Preacher, mm-hmm. those two alone put him at the top of my yeah. list of favorite comic book writers. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that was more like late 90s, 2000s. Right, kind of yeah. Stuff. Yeah, Transmetropolitan's fucking phenomenal. Really, really good. I'm. That's a complete blind spot. Mm-hmm. Le- what is it? So the Transmetropolitan takes place in a not-too-distant future. It follows a character called Spider Jerusalem, who's a a former journalist at the start of the story. Um, He's decided that he fucking hates people and civilization and other bullshit. I've been there. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So he lives alone in a cabin or whatever, and some editor that he used to work for is like, you're going to come back and work for me. And he's like, no, I don't want to, because he hates the city, which is like just this sort of generic future... um, uh, metropolis that exists um but yeah so he comes back most of it is uh is political satire um unfortunately by the time i was reading it it was well past the time that it was like relevant to current events so much of that is lost on me but it's it's really funny um what is it like the bush administration or is this it... was well it's late 90s so, it'd so be Clinton well, and... well it's written by warren ellis so it's um more like Margaret uh, Thatcher and yeah well no well I guess maybe a little bit but uh, who was the the prime minister the PM they had in the David early nineties sorry I'm gonna make democracy <laughs> disappear <laughs> sorry. Sorry, Tony Blair. Tony Blair, yes. Oops. Yeah. Tony Blair uh, steps would, up and reveals that he's in fact David Blaine. I would he's just been like to, David Blaine this entire time. I would just time. like you know to what? point out best magician ever. I would just like to point out that it is very late. Well, not even you that. You probably late. just confused because both of them held their breath underwater for like twenty four hours. <laughs> I, I remember that time that Tony Blair was right. locked Why in an orb of water. F- that's well, embarrassing. The weirdest part is that he never stopped grinning. That was the weird part. Yeah. This yeah. might be the first time I actually edit this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it, it's like it's like it, it left my mouth. Ma- it left my mouth before I even because it was just the bleh yeah. of the name, yeah, yeah. you know. And I was just like, David, David Blaine, Blaine, oh no! David Blaine, yeah. Get back in my mouth, words. Yeah, I, yeah. I knew who it was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> momentary uh brain fart mm. but yeah so it's mostly tony blair and i mean it's it's one of the one of the <laughs> one of the political figures that gets a uh, bit of a caricature of them uh portrayed in it but uh yeah it's cool and it, and it deals with like certain like um like civil rights issues and stuff like that um but yeah i don't know it's just it's just a whole lot of fun especially i i'm pretty sure i was still a teenager when i read it so if you're feeling a bit of that like anti-establishment kind of kind of vibes and rebellion there spider jerusalem is uh fairly yeah, he's probably an anti-hero he, he he believes in justice but maybe not the brand of justice you're used to reading in comics um but yeah that one's really fun Derek robertson um does some fantastic work in that one drawing uh various characters and yeah, I mean he's got a he's got a bowel disruptor that he uses against his enemies. That's kind of fun. So they like shit their pants. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah there's I'm a down. setting. There's a setting called Liquify. So that sounds a lot better than it was done in Kick Ass Two. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it could be said of almost anything. Yeah, yeah pretty uh, much anything was done better <laughs> than Kick Ass Two did it. 
But uh, yeah, yeah, really fun read. Uh, that one's also yeah. That so oh another thing that we maybe didn't mention is the the grandeur of these series because Swamp Thing. Well, actually, Swamp Thing isn't that long. It's what like thirty two issues or thirty something issues. Six long? volumes. Yeah. Um, Sandman is seventy five, and the the more or less standard for a lot of the Vertigo stuff seems to be sixty issues. I think Preacher is sixty. Uh, Why the Last Man is sixty. Something like and that. And Trans Metropolitan is sixty issues. Um, so yeah, they have pretty pretty lengthy runs, but yeah, if you finish them, they're great. It's worth they're worth finishing for sure. Oh yeah, it's it's like Stephen King's The Stand. Mm-hmm. It might be a thousand pages, right. but you you're gonna love it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and Warren Ellis is still one of my favorite comics writers. Like Transmit is great, really really fun. Yeah. Well, yeah, Warren Ellis is. Mm-hmm. I mean, his name evokes quality. <laughs> you <laughs> say Warren Ellis, and you're like, all right, I'm in. Yeah. What have you done recently? Castlevania. <laughs> oh yeah. No, comics wise, I don't remember. Well, didn't he do Karnak? Oh yeah, yeah, he did Karnak. He did Moon Knight. Um, yeah, he did uh, one or two things over at Marvel recently. Oh, all right. But yeah, his Moon Knight was fantastic. Yeah, but he, but he also wrote the yeah the Netflix Castlevania. Both, oh, both seasons of those are written by Warren Ellis. Well, I enjoyed those. Yeah, yeah, he's not bad. Uh, yeah, he did a he did a animated like I guess it kind of amounts to a movie. Of um, it was a GI Joe like special. It was one of those things that they like released. I think they released it online in like two to four minute increments or something. But it like adds up to like an hour long, uh, show. But yeah, it was pretty cool. So he's done. Yeah, he's done a little bit of animation. He yeah, he's kind of. I think he's dabbling in more uh things now. He's he's written a couple of novels. I think he writes for at least. I, I would imagine he's trying to get some of his stuff adapted into movies or TV shows. That kind of thing. Now that that's a profitable thing for right, comic book exactly. writers to do. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yeah, DMZ was great. I like Brian Wood quite a bit. Um, well, the, why the last man? Oh yeah, well yeah, let's do why the last uh, man. Uh, BKB is Bay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude's talented for sure. Uh, you know that's what he's doing now is uh, uh directing, producing the adaptation of Why the Last Man. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, good. Is that why they're taking their break from Saga? Uh, no, that was more uh, Staples okay. needing a break, but that's that's what he's doing in the interim. Okay, good. Is... <laughs> it's good that he's involved with it, and he's not like this. Uh, he's at the helm of it. Yeah, anything. yeah, that's fantastic. Well, and, and he's done he's done work in TV as well. Like he's yeah. he's written a couple episodes of Lost. Um, he worked on that Under the Dome show. Um, I don't know if he was writing scripts or just like a consulting producer or what, but he was involved with that show. So yeah, so he he knows a bit about the the TV animal. Well, he's done writing for the Runaways adaptation. Oh yeah, right, right, yeah. yeah. So he wrote my favorite Doctor Strange story, The Oath. Oh, The Oath. I can completely okay. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I completely forgot about that. And Marcos Martin did the art for that, right? Yeah, yeah. So they worked together on that Private Eye book. But didn't um, they do Barrier too? Yes, yeah. Uh, I, which I haven't read, but mm-hmm. I own all five. If it's yep. good and you don't remember who it's by, it's probably by him. Like, <laughs> like that's the thing. Is like his his style isn't as like Bendisi or as sure. Fraxione. Yeah, it doesn't uh like seep into the work. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. It's yeah. Well, I mean, with some, I mean, whatever you're reading. Uh, other than like realistic teenagers, like he doesn't yeah. have a distinct. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's not so much one of those that you can like read a line of dialogue or something. It's like, oh, well, that has to be. Yeah. You know, like with, with yeah, with Alan Moore, with with Neil Gaiman and Warren yeah. Ellis and, and a lot of, I mean, and really just any authors, you know, once you get familiar enough with them, you'll probably be able to kind of pick out their voice, you know? But yeah, I don't think his voice is really quite as loud. <laughs> when well, you read I, stuff, I, I, I mean, in his image stuff, when he just gets to be himself, you yeah, know, like, right. yeah, it, it, it's pretty distinct. Paper, Gold, and Saga have a lot of, like, right. similar tone, but, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Why the Last Man, or, like, any of his Marvel stuff, or anything yeah. like that, when he's, when he's working, you know, on stuff he doesn't own, sure, he's just a lot more solid good. Yes, right. Yeah, yeah. Which is also, yeah, which is always nice. Yeah. <laughs> to just have some solid good. Because I've never read Why the Last Man. You should. Oh, uh, I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah. The answer is because. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah, it's really good. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it it just it deals with a lot of like relevant stuff, stuff that's still relevant today. I, I think I did a reread like two or three years ago. I, I I'm due for a reread on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It's it's still good. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised I'm, you haven't read Preacher. Oh, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh yeah, yeah. I re- um when they did the when the show was coming out and mm. they did the little promo like reprint of number one. I read that, but that's as far as I've made it with it. It's just yeah. You would like it. Oh, I'm sure I would. You yeah. would love it. It's definitely like. Yeah. Well, and I've also never read. Uh, I haven't read Doom Patrol or Shades of Changing Man. I'm sure I would love both of those. So. Yeah. 
Doom Patrol is the next one I want to get to, mm-hmm. but at the same time, next one I want to get to because then I haven't finished the Sandman or Preacher or yeah. Swamp Thing. Like, you just want to get started on every Vertigo series and then not finish them. Well, I want to finish them. <laughs> I intend to. Right now, I am making my way through Miracle Man, and I will finish right, yeah. that. Well, yeah, I mean, it's like, what, like 18 issues or something, or 24? It's kind of, it's dense, though. If you, if you don't get through Miracle Man, then you might be doing it wrong. Yeah. Because it's really, really short. I'm loving it, though. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. great. Yeah. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Vertigo, do we have anything to say? Or are there any other series you guys want to talk about? Or uh, Well, I was going to say, yeah, with DMZ, that's a good one. Um, that's also, like, set in, like, tomorrow. Like, not a distant future, but it's, like, basically there's been another civil war, and um, I think it's the island of Manhattan has been declared a demilitarized zone. Mm-hmm. And there's a journalist who uh, wants to go there and, like, report on what's happening in that area. Um, cause there's still people living there, mm-hmm. uh, against the advice of, you know, respective governments and military forces. And so, yeah, they send a reporter and a photographer and like maybe one or two other people, um, in a helicopter and that helicopter gets, uh, shot down and they crash there. And I think everybody, yeah, I think after a few pages, everybody's dead except for, uh, the journalist or the, uh, the photographer. And rather than getting evac he goes ahead and decides he's going to stay and document what's going on there. So it's kind of, it's kind of like Brian Woods, like sort of like dystopian um love letter to new york i guess Mm because he's very much about like that kind of stuff um like just just different areas and their cultures but yeah definitely a lot of love for new york um so that one's pretty great um i don't think i've finished it but i did read a lot of it it was that was a solid one um did we get to fables yet is it oh yeah we we just compared the amount of bodily fluids oh right yeah (laughs) Yeah, fables, fables is with it too. Yeah, uh, premise of fables is uh, fairy tales are real, mm-hmm. but banished from the fairy tale world. Right. Uh, By well, they they are uh, refugees. Refugees. Uh, because yeah. The adversary has taken over their yeah their native land, and yeah. so they live in what like a like a city block in New York yes. called Fable Town. Yeah, and, it, and it's all enchanted, and they have to hide yeah. their abilities. Right. It's got like uh, a it doesn't have like a memory. Uh, Thing that like if a norm if a probably if a, uh, if a Monday walks oh, in yeah, there yeah. then like if they leave then they just forget everything that that they encountered there yeah it's yeah th- this show was ripped off by Once Upon a Time and probably to Absolutely. some extent the show Grimm but yeah well the thing was that uh, Bill Willingham and some of the other creators of Fables were shopping it around to develop it as a show the trouble <laughs> is that as they left meetings at networks bastardizations of their concepts started springing up in their wake. Uh, that, that's the danger of, like, all public domain exactly. characters. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, when, uh, um... Well, yeah, that's I mean, like, that's the thing, is, like, none of them star the werewolf, because right, yeah. the, the werewolf is a character that Bill Willingham created. Right, yeah. Well, it's sort of like trying <laughs> the to... the big bad wolf, well, Bigby, but, yeah. but as a werewolf... Bigby, yeah. yeah. It's like pitching a really good Frankenstein movie. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, right. they can just do it, and they don't have to credit you. <laughs> You right, know. exactly. I mean, yeah. If you didn't write the screenplay and didn't put your fucking name on it, and you're just like, yeah. wouldn't it be cool? Well, and not to mention the fact that Disney already has their own versions of many of the characters exactly, that are used yeah. in Fables. In fact, they're the ones that most of us are probably more familiar with. Yeah. So, yeah, or possibly the most popular, best-known versions of those characters, yeah, are the Disney versions of them. It just makes sense for them to do that. Um, but, yeah, kind of a bummer for them that they weren't able to sell it as a show. Well, I, and then the thing is, now, like, a lot of the people I try to introduce Fables to, yeah. they go, like, oh, this again? I'm like, no, 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 right. no, no, yeah. this first. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Everything else exactly. again. Exactly, yeah, not again. <laughs> so. Holes. Yeah, that was, um, so that was kind of a bummer to see that happen and, like, know that that's what was going on. Um, but, yeah, yeah, also pretty cool. And, yeah, just, yeah, it's, it's what you might imagine, just, like, foul-mouthed characters and, like, isn't yeah. Pinocchio, like, he, he was turned into a real boy, but he's stuck as a boy, but he's still aging, and he, like, wants to bang chicks, and he can't, because he's a little boy. Yeah. <laughs> like, that kind of thing. So just, yeah, fun little twists on characters and that kind of thing. It would have been a fun show. It would have. <laughs> uh, it was a video game. Right, yeah, the yeah. Telltales, right? Yeah, Telltale uh, made a video game where Big V is solving a mystery. Nice. I never played it. Yeah, oh, Big V's the, but... the sheriff of Fable Town. Yes. So that's maybe something people, well, I guess if they played the game, they would know that, so. I mean, whether he's the sheriff or not, it's pretty cool to be solving a mystery, you mm-hmm. know, getting out, doing something, yeah, right, <laughs> healthy living. Having a, having a day, having a time. <laughs> yeah, that's, I think that's, have we covered pretty much everything in Vertigo? Yeah. That we want to... I mean, not everything in Vertigo. But, no, not uh, everything, but... 
a lot of it, but yeah, mostly Vertigo, like the the the, the, the crop is definitely the, the small ones that stand out. Those are yeah, like like John said, and must preacher. reads. I would say Preacher is a must read. Well, I don't know. Have you read it? <laughs> I would yeah. not call Preacher a must read. There are definitely yeah. people like I I have met that I can just say like, hey, wouldn't enjoy it. That's fine. Yeah, mm-hmm. you do your thing. Right. I'll do my thing. Yeah. I, yeah, it's uh, I, Pre- Preacher's very good, I'm sure, but it's I don't think it, it's just it's not well, and it's not like <clears throat> uh, at least in my mind, it's not like that that monolithic classic like right. like a Sandman. Yeah, I think Sandman is much closer to a must read. Yeah, you know, even if you're someone who would be distasteful towards the themes yeah. in it, I think that uh, as a work, we completely skipped over yeah. V for Vendetta. Oh right, yeah. as we should. Yeah. You don't well, like V for Vendetta? No, I well, I I don't dislike it. I think it's very much overblown. It's mm. not his best work no. by even a margin. And then the whole you know like uh, modern uh, mm. fetishization yeah. of Guy Fox. Yeah. Uh, well, but, not to mention, I'm uh, I don't think that was an original Vertigo product. It was imported and then reprinted under the Vertigo line. Oh, good. So then I, uh, yeah, we don't yeah, need to I, I could be mistaken, but I think there was a UK version of that that came out first and possibly before there even was a Vertigo. And then I think later on they, they reprinted it over here in the States. Um, if you want to read V for Vendetta, read The Crow instead. <laughs> <laughs> I do love The Crow. Yeah. Oh, but on the, the, the monolithic uh, status thing, like, yeah, that's the thing. It's like reading Sandman, especially Sandman, but I think even, even Swamp Thing to some extent. Swamp Thing? Like, these are, like... They raise so I mean people will will say often that like oh comics they're like our modern mythology but like Sandman is mythology like it reaches that level of mythology like it's about essentially a god and uh, among gods well and it, it just pulls from a lot of our stories and it right. builds on them yeah and it, it you you could say it's Neil Gaiman's doing his own take on it but sure. uh. uh I think in Sandman, much more so than American Gods, it's really just embracing these thoughts right. that, that you know are already out there and yeah. just letting the story go along. That right. what is the world of dreams? Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah, it, well, and that's yeah, and, and then the art. Oh yeah, like, I think Sam Keith is fantastic in that first arc there. So yeah, it's just uh, it, you, you know how he got the job. Mm-hmm. Uh, Neil Gaiman said. Uh, draw me a picture of dream turning into a uh, dream uh, describing a flower, and it, he drew like this psychedelic picture of like a uh, dream like turning into a flower. Huh. Nice. And he's like, "You got the job." Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Had he done the max before that, or did that come after? I don't remember. Okay, yeah, I, that was after because wasn't the max image? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so that would have been after. Oh yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Um, but yeah, well, and yeah, exactly. I mean, it's. <laughs> It kind of is mythology probably because it draws so heavily from, yeah, like, there's mythology in it, there's Shakespeare in it, there's, I mean, because, yeah, it's it's the world of dream. All of our ideas come from this, from the dreaming. They just get pulled in, you know, from the ether into our reality, into our world. So, it, I mean, that alone is such an, like, awesome, mind-blowing concept. And, yeah, for 75 issues, you get to deal with this dude who's in, the king of all of that. And, and yeah, you get to meet his siblings, and you get to meet Lucifer, and, like, it's it's fantastic journey and it's just yes yeah, hate to say epic but it's, it's fairly epic yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> epic in the classical sense like, right, like, yeah. like like the odyssey you take a journey <laughs> yeah right yeah epic. well and, and yeah exactly and and you can and you can tell very much uh from alan moore's style and from neil gaiman's style these guys are big time readers they're way into like the classic they're into you know the hefty literature stuff um well, look at League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Well, yeah, that's basically like that's basically I mean, like classic. I'm, I'm literature not talking porn. about Alan Moore's penchant for uh, fanfic. For, yeah, for just kind of ripping off characters because they're available. Uh, yeah, Lost I'm just saying Girls that's literature League. porn. Basically, uh, yeah, I mean Guy Fox is not an original Alan Moore creation either. So, <laughs> yeah. So, um, but yeah, it's and and with Swamp Thing, I feel like that's also somewhat mythological because he's. Sort he's he's not like quite an all powerful being, but he's like an avatar of our planet. Yeah, of the green. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's he's the avatar of the entire planet, and that has a lot of power and responsibility and conflict and existential crises and all of that. And and yeah, Sandman's doing the same thing. When, yeah. in that, within that first arc, he's like 
struggling with like, oh, who am I? What do I want to be? Like that kind of thing. So, which also makes it somewhat relatable. Well, and, and then you have Hellblazer. Like, like even if you don't think that the story and themes elevated, three hundred and a three hundred issue long comic book story yeah. is an epic tale. Yes, yeah. we have less. We have more written about John Constantine than we do Homer. <laughs> you right? <know>? Yeah. <laughs> See, 22 pages, 5 pages, 300, so, yeah, that's 66,000. Yeah, well, it's... It, nearly 7,000 pages of... It's, it's of 20 Hellblazer. years of stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like, so, yeah, the, the these Vertigos, like, are, um, they, they have a lot of monolithic titles. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely some of the, the really big stuff that, yeah, must reads uh, a lot of them. Many of, and must reads and then a lot of you ought to read. Yeah. Like, I would highly why, recommend it. Why the Last Man? I yes. wouldn't call it, you know, a must read, right. but I think you should. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, uh, he, yeah preacher, probably not a must read, but if you're okay with edgy content, I right. think you should. Yeah, yeah. I would say, yeah, Transmetropolitan. Yeah, I've just, yeah. one of the most enjoyable things I've read in, in, in comics. It's really great, really fun. And, and also, it introduced me to Warren Ellis, so. That was fun, um, yeah. So they, I think they tend to get a little overlooked with all the, you know, the flashy, uh, fun stuff that's out there. But these are definitely more like, yeah, it's it. You'll you'll ele- you'll well you'll gain XP. You'll level up by yeah. reading these. Uh, uh, the, uh, kind of the journey of discovering Vertigo mm-hmm. to me is the journey is parallel to the journey I have of like discovering film as a passion instead it's, of calling them movies. Yeah, <laughs> but you you my... are legally allowed to be ten uh, percent more pretentious after you read a Vertigo title. Yes, right. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. exactly, <laughs> uh, every one of those twenty-two page floppies is just another little. It's pronounced whom. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. get to drop on people. Right. See, but, this is this is probably what Marley was talking about the other day when she said something about like it seems like a lot of Alan Moore fans, and she wanted to say all Alan Moore fans are pretentious, <laughs> but she was polite and diplomatic about it and said it seems like most of them or many of them can be pretentious, and it's because of discussions. Like one hundred percent true. Yeah, it's, it's it makes you feel more pretentious <laughs> having read it. It's, like, well, and unfortunately, it's just so good. Like, well, if you also, would read it, you would understand why I'm talking about it. This it way. takes That's a lot all. of fucking effort to read it too. So once you're done, right, you're like, yeah. you're like, this is my, this is my reward exactly. it's for earned. reading this. Is I'm like, <laughs> and you know, and I, I guess pinky up of... th- that is that is the disclaimer you have to drop. Is like like when you're enjoying these things, it's like it doesn't make you better or anything right. like that. You you don't uh, you know get to take a shift at the gate. Right. You know, like like, but it is something you can celebrate. Yes. This, this, these yes. are these are. It's 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 enlightening in a way. Yeah, yeah you know yeah, what I mean. Because it's yeah. sort of like this has been here all along, and right. I've just been missing it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, when I started watching movies. Yeah. <laughs> but, 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 I, but I started. <laughs> but I started branching out. You know what I mean? Because yes. you know me, yeah. I'm a I'm a horror fan. Totally. Yeah. yeah. To the core. Mm-hmm. That's like if I had to choose the one. The core was more action. <laughs> <laughs> Sci-fi was definitely an yeah. element there. Yeah. Too. Yeah. <laughs> if if I had to choose, like what film genre i you know i love the most it's horror yeah, you know and so like when i i got into a big horror watching phase but then i started watching like more classic horror movies and that just yeah. kind of, and that just was adjunct to classic film in general mm-hmm. but you know in the last two three years yeah I've, I've seen 2001 a space odyssey taxi driver citizen kane fargo just all this shit for the mm-hmm. first time and yeah. you're like this was always here, yes. like like all the wasted years, <laughs> like in the way that um, I'm telling you about. You need to finish watching First Reform, right? Like that should be a priority because I'm. You know, we're talking about. Be, it sounds pretentious, but it's fine. Mm. You are doing yourself a disservice by living longer without that movie in your brain. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. In the same way where it's like, once I finish Sandman, I'm gonna be like, how the fuck did it take me this long to finish it? You know mm. what I mean? Like. I mean, that's a little different. I mean, it only takes you whatever, you know, an hour and a half to finish uh, First Reformed. No, I know. I'm just... It's got a set amount of time it takes. But yeah, these ones, it's going to take, like you said, more effort and and certainly more time. I'm I'm just saying, like, that's how I compare it, is I'm just like, when I first saw... When I first started watching Scorsese movies, I'm like, where has this been all my life? Yeah. That's how you... It's been right there. (laughs) That's how you describe Vertigo. And and the thing is, is being a fan of both movies Mm -hmm. and comics, Mm -hmm. you kind of need to do the regular kind of, for lack of a better term, the glut mm. first. The canon. Yeah. <laughs> so you can appreciate yeah. the finer stuff. Right. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah, I, I would never recommend someone who wants to get into comics read Watchmen. Do you know what I mean? As their first one. Yeah. 
I mean, I, uh, well, I wouldn't well, recommend it. But, yeah, you know, yeah. You well, could do that. The trouble is that everything after that, you're gonna have mm-hmm. to go back and reread it to like, oh, this is what it was yeah, doing. Exactly. Yeah, it's be- it's better to start with like, yeah, more than the novice stuff, and then yeah. read that, and because yeah, then you can recognize, oh, this is amazing. Yeah. Compared to every, you know, the other stuff that you know comes out regularly or that had come before it or any, you know, yeah. however you're gonna compare it to the rest of it. Well, because. Oh, go ahead. Well, no, it's just that if you do start on Watchmen uh, as your first comics, you will enjoy before Watchmen, because it's not taking anything away from the original. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's just continuing the, yeah, the, the big go. superheroes. Right, right. So. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, you're, you may spoil yourself. If you start with, like, some of the best, then, yeah, you may spoil yourself <laughs> for all the other stuff that you might have enjoyed otherwise, but you just can't, because it's like, well, no, I've had... I've had some of the best. Why would I go down here? But there's also, like, less context for it, too. Right, in terms sure, of, yeah. like, for example, like, Citizen Kane. Mm. The reason it has the reputation it has is because nothing like that had ever been done in sure. movies before. It right. was the first time that Sled murdered someone. <laughs> <laughs> and turned out to be his father all along. But you know what I mean. In mm-hmm. the same way that yeah. Watchmen is, it's like, oh my god, there was, like, what was it, 40 to 50 years of comics beforehand. It started mainly in the 30s. Yeah. So it'd be about 50 years. Yeah, about 50 years. Yeah, yeah. there's 50 years of comics before mm-hmm. just this magic that Alan Moore conjured right, up yeah, in print yeah. form, mm-hmm. you know, as opposed to the real magic he conjures up. Yeah. <laughs> in his bathroom or wherever. <laughs> his bathtub. <laughs> But, yeah, but, yeah, we should definitely uh, still have that disclaimer of, like, yeah, just liking something that's good or great or fucking fantastic doesn't make you a better person. It just means you can recognize that things are good. That's, oh, yeah. You, you, you know? It means you've gotten a chance to enjoy it. Right, yeah, exactly. It, you can don't, celebrate Don't go us. to England for a week and come back with an accent. Yeah. <laughs> don't read Watchmen and be the pretentious Alan Moore fan. Right. Don't read V for Vendetta. So. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta be honest, because I, I know you love V for Vendetta. Um, I mean, I read it like. Once I'm, I'm not. Time. I'm not honestly yeah. ripping on it. Sure. Like, yeah. 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 Well, like you said, it's not his best. So that's, yeah, that's it's fair, not. I think. But <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I was just gonna say I'm more inclined to agree with you. I've started V for Vendetta twice. Still haven't finished it. That doesn't surprise me. Yeah, but I'm just saying <laughs> you've it, started like four different Vertigo series and you haven't finished anything. Yeah, but I usually finish at least the trade. You know what I mean? Like this is one trade and I still haven't finished it. And mm. it's like once I start at least a singular book, I finish it. Whether, Do you, though? Yes. <laughs> what about V for Vendetta twice? The, that, my point exactly is <laughs> I, as I read this and I'm just and like... you call me out for not finishing First Reformed on the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Context. There's a time and a place, Andy. Oh. <laughs> God damn it. Now I have to edit. <laughs> if you do, I'll be amazed. Yeah. It only took like a year and a half. But you, but I'm just, I'm just saying, like, V for Vendetta, I read it and I'm just like, this is... It's just not for me. Yeah, yeah it's, it, it, I can recognize why people love it. I love the concept. I think there's some really cool shit in there. Well, and I think that a lot of its uh, quality, if you like, like a lot of what Alan Moore was like trying to polish up was commentary on a very specific time right, of British yeah. politics. That's what I was just gonna say that I have neither the country nor like a light living in that time. Yeah. Uh, to like really appreciate. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, that's lost on me, any political commentary, and then you get, like, the story, which is pretty, um, straightforward. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, then you get, uh, Neckbeards with Guy Fox mouth. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, ex- yeah, that's, that is a problem. Well, it's, yeah, it's, it's a little bit like what I was saying about, uh, Transmetropolitan. Like, probably a lot of what's good about it is lost on me, because, yeah, I wasn't, yeah. wasn't alive at that, or I was alive at the time, but I wasn't paying attention to British politics, or even American politics. But so. look, B for Vendetta, if he got, the, the, the Guy Fox had a gun that made people shit themselves, <laughs> yeah, top of the list. <laughs> right, yeah. Top of the list. Instant <laughs> redemption. Right, yeah. That's, that's fair. The gunpowder plop. <laughs> 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 yeah, you're, this is not going to be your last appearance, I guarantee you. <laughs> that was fucking amazing. This is your this is your version of draw me dream in a flower. <laughs> it's yeah. just like is this just make a poop joke off the on the fly? That's yeah. as good as yeah. you yeah. got. Gunpowder gun, gun plot is plop is my watchman. Yeah. It's my Sandman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, there's, all this stuff has to be in context. 
yeah. everything because at this point it's some of it's 30 years old yeah, yeah you know so you got to remember that it's like well this is it might even be a little dated oh yeah absolutely you know? well yeah it's yeah it's it's um it's tough to read those and even if they've been you know digitally remastered or anything like that it you'll still be able to tell that this is a 30 year old comic like it yeah. doesn't look like anything that's being printed today that was written with pigment on paper yeah and and, and then reproduced repeatedly yeah, right <laughs> with technology yeah that did not have quite the fidelity retention <laughs> that we do today hand lettered by todd klein <laughs> probably all of it with scripts that were transmitted via fax machine right yeah which was the cutting bleeding edge of technology <laughs> yeah no electronic mail for uh for the vertigo writers early on i don't know 93 Maybe, maybe they have pagers, right? Well, they maybe they could do electronic mail, but it would take so it would probably take longer for them to dial up and log in and well, and actually a script even like even though text is tiny, like it probably would be a lot of a lot of text for them to transmit via the interwebs at the time. So they yeah, the fax machine was probably a lot faster. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is it gonna? Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, that's this is gonna make a great joke in a superhero movie that's set in the nineties someday. Yeah. Have you seen Captain Marvel? No, not yet. Oh, well, never mind. Fuck it. Gunpowder plot. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, they make that joke in there, and everybody laughs, because remember the 90s? The bad chowder plot? <laughs> no, the fucking dial-up modem. Oh, How long yeah. It <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hang up! <laughs> Mom, I was I'm so close! I'm trying to get on AOL! I'm just trying to play Oregon Trail. <laughs> yeah. Didn't need the internet for organ trap. My Neopet is starving. <laughs> I played Oregon Trail. Yeah, that's it's a fun one. That's yeah. fun. Did you play multiplayer Oregon Trail? No. Good. I would have called you a liar if you had said yes. <laughs> it doesn't exist. I mean, I mean, I, I, I played it with people. We would take turns. Yeah. Yeah. That that's the way to do it. That's how it's played. Yeah. <laughs> Pass and play. Yeah. <laughs> But then, yeah, I think we've covered Vertigo pretty well. Yeah. Is there, is there anything anybody wants to talk about? Uh, also, yeah. we, we do kind of hype these up as, like, cornerstones of comics oh. and elevating the medium right. and all that stuff. <laughs> uh, I, I want to uh, point out that this is also, like, what has traditionally been consigned as, like, boy comics. Oh, uh, like, yeah. Like, uh, it's really tough, like, without having, like, a background in it to describe, like, the romance comics mm. or, like, the non, uh, like, like, sci-fi fantasy yeah. action mm. genres but like archie comics mm. has been going on forever yeah archie is as old as superman and like that's kind of like been thought of a lot of the time as like a girl comic sure yeah because it's about two girls and a guy <laughs> and who loves who at any given time <laughs> um but I think that that's sort of like a, a monolith of its own, too. I mean, yeah. like, oh, yeah. if 300 issues is what I right. consider an epic tale for <laughs> Constantine, this is, you know, like, my god. Yeah. Yeah, well, Archie, uh, I think, is, uh, with the current numbering system they're using, it's in the 700s now. Yeah, it's just, and And that's just be that's not even counting all the offshoots. Exactly. Yeah, that's strictly the main Archie title. That's not uh you know, it's not Betty and Veronica, it's not Jughead, that's not uh, Archie and his pals or any of the other stuff that's come out over the last 80 years. Uh, that's just his own, you know, singular title. So, I guess uh I just want to make the point. Yes, read the the Vertigo comics mm. and also all the others. Yes. Yeah, every other comic you're inclined to read, you should read that. Spend all your money on it and then eat them when you're done. Yes. You will have some. Yeah. Well, I've spent all my money on them. So. Is I'll that what it. you spend all your money on? <laughs> <laughs> We're not going there. Because then I do have to edit it. <laughs> then, I, then I do have to edit it. Ooh, it's really tempting to actually say something specific. No, no, no. He, he has said all he needs to. Like, <laughs> it's as good as a confession. I mean, and yeah. really, anybody who's still listening has heard this story from him. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm, oh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a good chuckle when I hear this. <laughs> yeah. When, when, when Mike Morano, like, stepped foot through the door, I was like, Mike, you got to hear this. <laughs> you'll, you'll never guess what I did. Yeah. <laughs> this is amazing. Not really. It's kind of sad. <laughs> So, for anyone wondering what we're referencing, no. <laughs> Andy paid, went to Mexico and paid someone to shoot a horse and eat it, like, raw. 
God it damn was, it! Now I have to edit. It's the next level of the donkey show. It, it was it was actually like really cruel to the horse. He yeah. is not a good shot. I, 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 and it wasn't like an ill horse. Either. No, it was a very <laughs> healthy horse. Really healthy horse. I invested in a lot of bum fights videos. The so. the person who who sold the service was in very dire straits. <laughs> it was it was exploitive to the person to the horse. <laughs> we shouldn't be laughing. Andy's a monster. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, shit. It's easily, at least in the top three things I'm most disappointed in so, before. So, I guess our point is, instead of paying someone to shoot their horse and eat it raw, buy a comic book. Yeah. Buy a hundred comic books. At, buy, least, you at buy least one comic book. At least yeah. one comic book. What are you going to do with that $4? What are you going to do with it? Nothing. Buy a comic book. Buy a comic book. <laughs> The end. I guess that's what, yeah. I guess that's what we're all trying yeah, to say. Yeah, that's here. the end of this. Is just buy a comic. We don't give a fuck. <laughs> just buy any. Well, I mean, buy them from us too. Right. Yeah. I mean that that would definitely help and uh, be able to tell you that if you do keep buying comics from us, then we'll be able to keep making podcasts where we tell you at the end you should buy comics. Yeah. Perpetual cycle. Got to cover cycle. all the overhead. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Got to cover my exorbitant guest fees. Right, <laughs> I I do not come cheap. You don't get gunpowder plop for free, all right? <laughs> Can I pay you in these trail mix? <laughs> yes. Okay. Good. Perfect. Good. But yeah, that's pretty much. What yeah, that's it. Today. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. All right. Well, thank you guys for listening. Uh, we'll probably do another one, but in case we don't beforehand, Free Comic Book Day is on May fourth. So. May the fourth be with you. Yes, and also comics. Exactly, and also and also comics be with you. <laughs> Come by JPM Comics and Games across from the Donut Man, Route sixty six, twelve to seven. Get yourself a free comic book. Listen to some of our amazing banter. <laughs> that's thrown in for free. Right. Yeah. That's Along with your other free right yeah. thing that we're giving you. It's a day of freebies, and yeah. we're not going to promise that you will be given a cheeseburger. But if someone sets up a grill outside and is giving out cheeseburgers, <laughs> we, they, Jason and Andy aren't going to stop them. Right. Yeah. yeah I'm not going to care. So you could be the one giving out cheeseburgers, <laughs> but we definitely will not make any promises in this regard because, uh, in all likelihood, it won't happen. It, it, yeah. It's it's not terribly likely. The karate studio would probably complain. And, and if we and if we did promise that, then Andy would have to edit it because I've spoken to our lawyers about it just in these few minutes. And yeah, we can't promise cheeseburgers. That's not within our our legal rights. Yeah, yeah. The lactose intolerant will demand hamburgers. Yeah, and then there's the our hot dog sandwiches conundrum. Like, well, yeah, and and are and are these hamburgers actually horse like from Mexico? There's horse meat. That were, back. were the were the were those hamburgers you gave us earlier horse meat? I did not connect those two stories. I thought I tasted a hint of cruelty, so I'm not. I'm not sure. No, that was. Just Am like I going to have the runs burger. now? <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna set it to liquefy. <laughs> pop talk, plop, plop talks. Yeah, plop talk. Talk till you're hoarse. <laughs> and with that, we will leave you till our next episode. Um, so we'll see you then, or on Free Comic Book Day. Bye. 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 Bye.